Meteorite. Right, left a bit, left a bit. Mixergy Smart Hot Water Tank. My name's Alan Hart and, and today we've got a very, very special video for you today. Um, we're taking out an old hot water cylinder, an old unvented cylinder, and we're going to install a new smart cylinder. And this smart cylinder, it's amazing to be honest. It works with your phone, so you can use it on your phone, you can... You can set it so it'll just use the it'll just um, produce the hot water that you need for your house. It'll also learn how your house works and um, control that. And you can use it with you can use it with your existing boiler, so your existing system boiler. You can also use it for modern technologies. So, for instance, you can use it with air source, or you can use it with PV. Um, so, so it's really adaptable to any of the new technologies. Uh, without further ado, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to Richard. Richard, we're installing this in, in Richard's property from Viva Training Academy. Also, what we're going to do, so we put it in Richard's house to start with, but we're also going to install them in the training centre at Viva Training Academy. And then if anybody wants to come in and have a look at them and see how they work, we're going to do some sort of um, training or courses on this. I'm not sure how that's going to work just yet, but we, there will be more more involved in this later on uh, so just look out for that as well um so without further ado what we'll do we'll bob over to richard and we'll show you yeah let's go and have a look go see richard thank you alan and thank you mix ag um, today we're going to be taking out my old traditional unvented cylinder and we're going to be replacing it with a brand spanking new revolutionary mix ag unvented cylinder Something that uh, traditional cylinders do do is to warm the water um, typically from the bottom and every time you to draw off any water you've got the whole cylinder that needs to be warmed and then drawing off the warm water from the top of the cylinder. With a mixer G, they're so super clever, we're going to learn a whole lot more about them but my understanding is, is that they warm just enough water at the top of the cylinder um, and they learn how a family works as well. So if you need two showers in the morning they'll warm say two thirds of the cylinder, one shower in the morning, one third of the cylinder, absolutely superb technology. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the old unvented cylinder and then we're going to install the new Mixergy unvented cylinder and then we'll show you all its cool benefits a bit later on in the video. So we've just isolated the cold water, we've opened the hot tap to get any excess water out we can, it don't, it, that doesn't empty the cylinder We've got to get the hose pipe onto the cylinder. Fortunately, the people that installed this cylinder have got a, a nice drain cock on for us. So we've got the hose pipe on the drain cock, open the drain cock, and the cylinder's now just emptying of all the hot water. We'll then isolate it and look to start to remove the cylinder. Meteor Rich. Left a bit, left a bit. We've removed the old cylinder now, and, and now we're going to install the new Mixergy Smart Cylinder. So what I'm going to do is, before we do that, I'm going to ask Pete, who is the CEO of Mixer J, and he's going to tell us a little bit about these, this smart cylinder and why we would use or why we would install a smart cylinder. Also, there's some amazing things with this battery technology, which to me um, is bizarre, but I'll pass you over to Pete, and Pete can tell us a little bit, about, a little bit more about that, and then what we'll do, we'll go on to, we'll install the cylinder and we'll show you the cylinder and show you it working and show you some of the features and benefits and and why you know why why would install it really um so yeah let's uh, go over to pete yeah alan so i guess the best place to start is by looking at how the energy system in the uk has changed considerably over the last 10 years and if we look at this graph here it shows the carbon that you get whenever you use a kilowatt hour of electricity since 2012. Back in 2012, we had about 30% of the generation was from coal. And, but since then, there's been a massive change at, to the point now where most of the coal generation has gone. And we now have about a third of the UK's power generated from wind and quite a substantial amount also from solar. So you can see on this graph how carbon intensity has plummeted from around half a kilo all the way down to just under 200 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. For reference, gas, if you just burn gas directly, 
it's around 220 grams of CO2 for each kilowatt hour of heat. So we're now at a point where on average, electric and gas are about the same carbon intensity. Of course, in practice, from one minute to the next, it, it, it's very volatile with electric. It, if there's a lot of wind and sun, it can be very, very green, very, very low carbon. Um, but then on the flip side, uh, where there's not much renewables, actually using gas directly is, is, more, is more effective and uses less uh, carbon, carbon dioxide. And the other thing that's changed a lot is the price. So if we look at this graph here, in green, we can see the half hourly price on the UK market is called the balancing market to make sure supply and demand are always met. And this is incredibly volatile. Most of the time, domestic electricity prices are higher than gas. Gas being around three pence plus VAT per kilowatt hour and electric being anywhere between 10 and 20p per kilowatt hour. But actually, with more and more wind and solar, we're seeing a lot of instances on the market where electric is going uh, way below gas and sometimes even negative. And that's when you're actually being paid to consume to uh, make sure that the system stays sa stable. And so at the moment, we're not really in a position where there are many tariffs that can exploit this market reality, but we're getting there. And there are a few that have emerged where the price of electricity is changing and sometimes going negative. And then the problem becomes, well, if I've got a hot water cylinder and it's hooked up to a gas system gas boiler, how do we take advantage of these low electricity prices? And so that's where the Mixergy smart cylinder comes in. So we like to think of the mixture tank a bit like a battery. Uh, Alan alluded to batteries and in, in, in the sense that we can store energy when it's really freely available because of the amount of renewables. And so we do that by having it connected to the Mixergy platform through the internet connection to the household router. And this platform talks both to the user app on their phone, um, which allows a householder to put in whatever ever tariff they happen to be on, but it also can talk to the energy system, to things like National Grid, so that if there is a surplus of power, uh, the customer can take advantage of that. And so how does the actual cylinder itself work? Well, we have, it's, it looks just like a conventional unvented cylinder. And if we look at this drawing here, what we've, what we've done is we've just taken all the heating stuff. So the coil for the indirect heating from the system boiler and the immersion, that all comes right up to the top of the cylinder. And we have this control electronics module there on the top as well. As the system heats, it first establishes a hot zone right at the top of the tank. And once that's attained the target temperature, let's say 55, 60 degrees, then we, to continue heating, start running this little circulation pump right at the bottom of the cylinder. As that cold water comes up to the top, it diffuses and it instantly attains the same temperature as the surrounding first slug, if you will, of hot water that we had established at the very top and pushes the heat uh, down. And by heating in this way, we can heat any amount from 10% to 100%. And so this heating what you need reduces standing heat losses, but it also creates a lot of headroom if there's suddenly a spike of cheap or uh, free or even negatively priced electricity. And, and it also means that the system recovers very quickly to a useful temperature. So from, from stone cold, you get some useful hot water out in a fraction of the time. And so the final thing that you get with the smart mixergy cylinder is the ability to connect to a heat pump. So all of the mixergy cylinders are now heat pump ready. So they can be installed today for a system boiler to use gas alongside electric whenever there's a lot of renewables on the system. But in future, should there be an air source or a ground source heat pump installed, the tank can be hooked up to that without having to replace the cylinder. The mixture stuff comes with a 25 year warranty. So we wanted to make sure it's future proofed for whatever low carbon energy source is installed in the home. So we've now commissioned the Mixer G tank and it's connected to the internet so we can do things like this. Alexa, what is a charge in Mixer G tank? Mixer G tank charge is 39%. So 39% is what we can do when we only heat what we need. And you can see here on the gauge that 
we've got approximately three lights lit up, which is, corresponds to a third of the tank, 30% roughly, of the system being heated. What we can also do from the gauge is boost, so you can hear that click. It's now pulled the switch live relay, uh, calling the system boiler, and there'll be a zone control valve that will switch over to allow the, the flow to come back through the cylinder coil. So we now have the mixture tank installed and connected and through the internet we can connect it to the mobile app for the user so we can see the state of charge. So in this case uh, Richard's tank is currently at 90% hot water level. We can also set a schedule so for any day of the week we can decide how much to heat and at what time or we can just let the mixture tank decide on its own based on how the system's being used. In addition we can track energy consumption over time, track the cost and finally, if there are any issues with the install, particularly around the system boiler settings, this can be flagged automatically through the app and the notification can be, can be given. So uh, that's, that's it really. And I guess it's now just for Richard to monitor how this system's working and uh, in future see how it works with any tariffs that he gets with his new smart meter. Thank you very much for that, Pete and Richard as well for letting us use use your house um, to put this cylinder in. We have got um, we've got an unedited video now to show you, and it's just Richard and Pete just chatting about the cylinder and the different technologies and how it works. And I think it's a really really good video. But as I say, it is it is unedited because people walking and stuff and dogs are barking and stuff but it's a really good video just one thing to point out that these cylinders are now available so it does say in the videos that will be available next year well we're already december now obviously we're nearly christmas and when we come back after christmas it's 2021 so the cylinders are ready and available from 2021 in january so that the cylinders will be available. So if anybody did want to order one of these cylinders or want to know more, then just contact Mix uh, Mixer J, uh, and and they'll be able to help you with that. So yeah, I'll just uh, thank thank you to everybody for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please put some comments below. Pete said that he's going to come on and try and answer some of them questions if he can and help you and give you some support. Um, so yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. So can you tell us a bit more about the cylinder then, Pete? Yeah, sure. So it's basically just like any conventional unvented hot water cylinder, except that we have this electronics module on top. And this connects also to a little display, which tells you how much uh, hot water is inside at any one time. Okay, so how does that show you how much hot water there is inside? So when the whole thing's powered up, it has some LEDs and there's a red, blue level, which tells you proportionally how much hot water. It's a bit like the heads up display on that car kit from, what was it, Knight Rider? Oh, Knight Rider. Oh, Knight Rider, yeah. 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 So, um, so that, that gives you a, a, an indication of how much is in, inside. And it, of course, also tells you on your phone with the Mixer G app, uh, will also tell you. Uh, so I can have a look. So when, when this is all installed and upstairs and working, I can see on the front of the cylinder exactly how much hot water is in there at any one time. Yeah. I go on the app, it's at home or in the office, so I can see how much hot water that I've got. Yeah, for there's, sure. There's also yeah. that boost feature, isn't there? So that you showed me earlier on with the app. That's right. With the app, there's a very quick boost, or you can really dive in and make a, quite an elaborate schedule if you want, or you can just let the tank learn your usage profile, and over time, it'll start to develop a sense of how much it needs to heat according to how much how much everyone's using it. In so the how will it learn how we as an household, you you know what what our demand is for hot water? Yeah. So. Well, what it does is it's measuring the hot water that's inside it at all times. Okay. And so over time. So how does it measure the hot water? So there's a little sensor inside. It's like a strip that sticks on the inner stainless tank liner. Right. And that's got a bunch of sensors inside, which gives you a picture of the temperature distribution oh, okay. at all times. Yeah. yeah. And then from that, it gives a sense of how much hot water is inside. Okay. So I can see from here and I can look on the app and that's controlled by a strip on the inside mm -hmm. and that's so this is this connected to the web as well is that right it is yeah so it, it connects via this um, ethernet over power plug module okay you just plug it right next to the broadband router yeah and then ethernet cable goes in so you, that makes it really easy to install you don't need to know the wi-fi credentials or anything like that someone's changed it just plugs in and it um, goes straight away 
um, and that's and then once once it's plugged in connected to the internet then this talks to our software in the cloud right which um, allows it to learn yeah your usage profile so that's a really neat idea that this so we we basically we we put this into the back of the router and um, plug that into the mains the mm -hmm. main circuit and because this is going to be hardwired into the fuse spur upstairs that automatically connects it to the internet it we does we don't need a receiver upstairs yeah the and up. the great thing is it's not like wi-fi or wi other wireless comms which can be quite flaky yeah this communicates through the neutral <coughs> the neutral wiring so as you said on the the, the fuse spur yeah it goes through the neutral all the way back to consumer unit and right. the, the neutral is common to all circuits so it'll yeah. go to any mains ring to the to the broadband router Got you. and get, yeah. get you a solid connection there yeah that's really clever so what else can you tell me about it what's uh yeah so we've also so it's basically identical to conventional cylinder in that you know you've got your connections for the system boiler coil um you've got your draw off and you've got your cold feed but then the the one other thing that's distinct about this is we have the what we call the top up pump at the bottom so that's a really small a little pump which pulls cold water from the bottom of the bottom of the cylinder during heat, uh -huh. and introduces it into the top to facilitate this top up heating that we talk about. Which the top up heating allows it to only heat what you need. So yeah. explain that to me then. So why? Sure. So why if we've got hot water around the top of the cylinder, mm -hmm. why do we want to pull cold water from the bottom of the cylinder to the top of the cylinder? Yeah. So it's basically if you think of an old style economy seven tank where you had two heating elements and one at the top was your boost. Yeah. So we've kind of taken that concept to the extreme in that we've got the coil and the and an uh, optional electric heating element right towards the top of the tank. Okay. When the heating input has heated a small volume of hot water at the top, there's nowhere for the heat to go. Right. A heat doesn't want to conduct down in water. Uh -huh. In fact, it's, water's a very poor conductor of heat. So in order to keep heating the system, okay. you need to pull cold water from the bottom. Right. And then we have a little device called a diffuser in the top, uh -huh. in that hot zone at the top. Okay. And as the cold uh, water is pumped in, it pushes the heat down. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. So you've so literally got to pull it to, so, so it's not going to conduct well, but it's kind of, you force in the hot water. Exactly, down, yeah, down you're, you're, pushing, pulling the you're pushing it down, that's it. And around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really good system. So this is all connected to the net. I can, I can, so there's a thing, I've, I've seen something in my research, I did a little bit of research about this tank, obviously before I wanted one in, in the house, and I found it really exciting that it works like a battery in some respects. You, you can compare how it works to working like a battery. So can you explain that for us? Yeah, sure. So by being connected to the internet and by having this uh, optional heating element, uh -huh. What this can provide is an opportunity for using really cheap or, or even what they say negatively priced um, electricity. Okay. Whenever there's too much wind, or uh, typically in the north of Scotland, or solar that's down often in the southwest, okay. like in Cornwall. Yeah, of course. Whenever there's too much for the electricity system, the market drives the price down to encourage people to consume. Right. At those times, it can often be cheaper than gas, so the tank can opt to use electric instead of using the system boiler for those right. instances where there's okay. loads of wind. So it helps to bring in more renewables, and it can even charge up like a battery, a bit of excess energy to ride you through for a few days if there's a load of wind, a load of cheap energy. Okay, so so basically we're going back to the fact that the electricity price changes once every 30 minutes yeah and and if there's an excess of energy available in the grid then you can actually take the, you can get set the cylinder to utilize that cheap energy at any time yeah and it actually you don't even need to set it and um, it, it can automatically for you just look at the price in the market right that's the the, the great thing about it being connected to the internet is that we have stuff running in the software platform that keeps it looking for the best deal so to speak in terms of electricity yeah uh, so that it can take those surpluses and offload the boiler so my so my cylinder is going to be scanning the market 24 that's hours it. a day it's trying to get you the best deal yeah. that's it <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great that yeah. sounds great so um this can be introduced to other 
um, other energy efficiency technologies. Is that is that correct? That's, it works yeah. well with air source and solar PV, yeah. solar thermal. Uh, absolutely. So when if you have so a situation with solar PV, yeah, we have what we call the PV diverter, which okay. is a little electronics module which goes with the heating element. Okay. And the PV diverter will sense whenever the house is exporting surplus solar energy from the roof. Okay, yeah. And instead of exporting it, it will put it in a tank so you effectively get free hot water for those instances where there's more, more solar PV being generated than what the household's consuming. So if you're on a, um, the RHI, the Renewable Heat Incentive, and you were going to get paid money for that electricity going back to the grid, yeah. Um, does this then work out if it's going to be cheaper to consume that yeah. electricity as opposed yeah. to send it back to the grid? Exactly. So, well, but that's that's where the value comes because the cost of buying electricity yeah. is always higher than what you get paid for producing it. Right. Solar okay. PV. Of course. Well, and so that creates this incentive to why not just use it locally yeah. rather than pay otherwise you have to pay more yeah. uh, to, to buy it in so yeah. you're using what you're producing yeah no that sounds that sounds like a really good thing so so that's where solar pv so with air source does it yeah get... so with air source heat pumps um we have a plate or ground source even yeah. we have a heat transfer module yeah which we can connect to the cylinder by a couple of auxiliary ports on the oh, side okay. it's a plate heat exchanger and a pump yeah so rather than using a big coil yeah um, we have this external module yeah. and that has a bunch of advantages over having a big coil in the side, in, yeah. inside which can be quite limiting in terms of the, the transfer of heat and the, the recovery. You get much better recovery with this external heat transfer module yeah. and it means that you get more efficient heat transfer, you can improve the coefficient of performance in, in a lot of instances of the heat pump okay. with it. Um, and Essentially, it avoids the problem with coils, which is they start to bathe themselves in their own heat, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. It gets yeah. increasingly hard to put the heat in. Yeah. So these plate heat exchange arrangements are, are, are can be very effective. So can that, and that can be retrofitted to any of the cylinders? Yes, as of um, <laughs> January next year, all mixture tea cylinders will be heat pump ready. Does, so my, my one's not. It will be when we swap it out <laughs> in March. <laughs> but so, so from January, yeah. Uh, so people, if they got one of these cylinders installed from January, yeah, and they were considering air source um, in, in the future, yeah, then they're all the cylinders already ready because it's ready. A, a big yeah. cost with air source installations is having to in, install or upgrade or renew the cylinder. Absolutely. I guess. So, yeah. so these are air source ready. Exactly. And the, and the thing is, these are uh, they come with a twenty five year warranty. They're made of stainless steel. They last a long time. So you don't. It's a good warranty. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, because the, there's been a lot of um, progress with um, particularly things like duplex stainless steel 3M6, yeah. which uh, last a, a considerably long time. Yeah. So with that, you really want it to be future-proof. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So yeah. Um, that was the, the motive behind going for heat pump ready uh, in January next year as, as a product launch. Yeah. So the, the last of the technologies that I think this could work with is it would be your solar thermal? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, we actually got a few solar thermals so that we can do twin coil yeah. for solar thermal. Equally, we can use you can actually use the same heat transfer module uh, that you've used for an air source heat pump. So right. There's lots of options for solar thermal transfer as well. That sounds really good. Yeah. So, so, so how many of these units have you got installed then already? Just over a thousand units. Over a thousand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're yeah. running at about at this point about 30, 30 installs a week. Thirty installs a week. Yeah. That's, well, that's pretty good. Still early doors, but yeah. And so, is it true that they all they all sit together as one big brain, or they're all connected to one big brain? Yeah. So there is a big brain, uh, if that's how you want to put it, in a in a bunch of servers uh, somewhere near Reading, I think. Okay. Um, where they all connect into, and where if if you sign up, yeah, you can opt into providing grid assistance. So whenever there's a surplus of wind or what have you, they can turn on. To help the system balance supply and demand and um, you could put in your own tariff details and we're working with some of the uh, big energy suppliers around new tariffs that are coming down in the years to come yeah. so that they can make the best of the opportunity for flexible pricing right right that all sounds really exciting and interesting stuff well yeah so far <laughs> <laughs> cheers alexa what is the charge in Mixergy tank? Mixergy tank charge.
charges 0%. Alexa, set Mixergy tank charge to 50%. Uh, uh, no, there we go. <laughs> it's worked. Too. I'll cancel it. I'll